The topic today is alpha, beta, gamma. These are the three first letters of the Greek alphabet, but that's not the topic. The topic is a paper by alpha, beta and gamof, which became known as the alpha, beta, gamma paper. It's a fairly famous paper. It's one of those papers, I guess, that's sort of less well known than it should be in the sense that it really is a sort of defining moment in science. Um, and yet it's mostly known for the fact that it was a rather bad pun, the way the authors were set up, than about the scientific content of it. Let me talk to you about Alpha's work. He imagined the universe at th about three minutes after its inception. He believed that the universe started with a Big Bang. And the particles he knew about in 1948 were the neutron, which I represent by a nice white neutral thing, and a proton, which is black in this picture. So I'm going to imagine there was about seven protons to each neutron in this stage of the universe after about three minutes. There will be electrons, but we'll forget about them. And there are photons, and we'll forget about them. Just concentrate on the protons and neutrons. Now, if a proton and a neutron get together, they stick. And at a certain stage, they will hit together very rapidly, and some of them will stick rather like these two coming together. And if I put electrons around there, I'll make a deuterium atom. If I put electrons around a proton, I'll get a hydrogen atom. So this is the bare a deuterium, this is the bare hydrogen. But you haven't got electrons sticking to these because the system is so hot. The system, I mean the universe is so hot. It's enormously hot. Any electron that would try to get onto this is evaporated away almost instantaneously. So this proton and neutron could get together and make a pair, and another one can make a pair. And these two deuterium nuclei, they can come together and actually they stick together. They make an alpha particle, which is the nucleus of a helium-4 atom, a helium atom. And this pair could join up as well and make another helium atom. It was the first time that anyone sort of seriously thought through the consequences of a hot Big Bang, of the universe start, starting in a very hot, condensed state, um, and figured out what that would do in terms of synthesizing the heavier elements, producing he elements heavier than hydrogen. So by 17 minutes, all of these neutrons have bound themselves into helium nuclei, and that's all you have left. Now, nothing much happens in the universe for the next... 350,000 years, by which time the electrons have cooled so much that it's now possible for electrons, two at a time, to come onto this helium nucleus and make helium atoms. And electrons can come onto this proton and make a hydrogen atoms. So Alpha came up with the idea that you could calculate the later stages of the universe, how many atoms of each type are formed, where do atoms come from. And th so you, he says, by weight, there is a quarter of the universe made up of helium-4, and by weight, that, that three quarters of the universe is made of hydrogen. And if you look at interstellar space, you find that three quarters of the universe is made of hydrogen, and about a quarter is made of helium. It was a huge deal. I guess at the time it sort of wasn't taken terribly seriously because no one really believed in a hot Big Bang at that point. And so it was really a slightly hypothetical, well, if there were a hot Big Bang, then what would the consequences of it be? We're talking now about stuff that was going on in the first three minutes of the universe, stuff that, that was really telling us how things came together in the early universe to build what we're made up of, the elements. So by doing this calculation and working this out, he was able to show evidence from astronomy which supported the Big Bang. So the paper said that, that all the elements could be explained by this process of Big Bang nuclear synthesis that the, the, in these first few seconds of the universe, you could actually make everything all the way from hydrogen, uh, deuterium, helium, all the way up to the heavy elements. Um, and what we now know is that actually most of the heavy elements are actually made subsequently in, in the centers of stars rather than in the Big Bang itself. This caused a big stir. Ralph Alpha, with his supervisor, George Gamow, who worked together on this project, decided to publish it. Only, Gamow had a, a wicked sense of humour, which was rather naughty. He decided it would be more fun with Ralph Alpha and George Gamow to slip in the middle of the name Hans Bethe, who was his big friend. And then you would have a paper by Alpha, Bethe and Gamow. 
Alpha, Beta, Gamma. The paper has been known as Alpha, Beta, Gamma henceforth. It's a little bit of a fraud because in fact Hans Beta, the middle author, didn't actually have anything to do with it. He just was a mate of Gamow's and Gamow's thought it would be a good joke to put his name down as one of the co-authors. But people thought it was funny, all except for Ralph Alpha, who felt really cheated that somebody who did no work got his, their name on his fundamental piece of work. So he was really rather embittered by the whole thing. So Alpha, sort of this, this was his PhD, this work. So just to illustrate how groundbreaking this, this work was, and, and it was realized at the time, normally when you defend your PhD, so you write your PhD and you, you sort of, you have to defend it. You have to defend the content to experts in your field, okay? So in England, typically, for example, you will have a couple of academics that will sort of probe you on the content of your PhD, and you have to defend that. And that's about it. There's no one else there. It's just you, two guys in, in, a, in a room somewhere. And at the end, hopefully after maybe four hours or so, three, four hours, you, you, you sort of, they give you a tick and they say, yes, you, you defended it properly. Or they don't, and it's bye-bye. Um, in Alpha's case, there were 100 pe over 100 people at his PhD defense. The press was there. But he, he wrote on the paper to the editor, um, Alpha, Beta, in absentia, Gamow. And so it was meant to be a joke. And the editors, I think, showed the paper to Beta. And he looked at it and he said, oh, this is a very amusing title. I like that title. And then he read the paper and thought, well, this is quite good physics. It might even be right. So he scrubbed off the in absentia. And, and so it was partly Beta's fault for allowing that to go ahead. It's quite an entertaining, rather weak kind of pun. There are, you know, there are famous stories about, about authorships of papers. There's, there's a story of somebody who wrote a paper in the first person plural, so we, we did so and so, and it was actually a single author paper. And he got a note back from the journal saying, you can't do that, if you're a single author, you have to say I. And he couldn't be bothered to change all the, all the we's into I's, so he put his cat down as a co-author on the paper. I did hear, uh, supposedly, that the cat then subsequently got, actually got invited to give talks at conferences.